What happens if you do mount a directional tire backwards? To find out, I've teamed up with Prelli. They've lent me their rather lovely Swedish proving ground in the very north of Sweden. We have the brand new Prelli Citurato All Season SF3, which is one of the very best all season tires, or as you call them in North America, an all weather tire. It is quite clearly a directional tread pattern, and we are gonna mount it both forwards and backwards and do all the usual testing, including traction and braking, which I think will be very interesting, snow handling, we're gonna look at aquaplaning and maybe we're even gonna look at dry and wet performance of the tires. I don't really know what to expect. I'm assuming the tire companies know what they're doing because they've obviously engineered the tire to look and move in this direction for a reason. I guess there's one way to find out. Let's get on with the testing. So, interesting. I'm driving to the VDA where we do acceleration and braking testing. And there's a bit of a downhill on the way to a roundabout and obviously this is a proving ground so you're never driving quickly on the access roads and i start braking on this downhill towards the roundabout i'm braking more and more and i'm like the braking feels really good with the tire backwards that i must be going mental and braking is the most important part of any test it's always weighted the highest not just in mine but in any test and then i go around the corner and there's a slight uphill and i oh there's a bit more wheel spin than there was before. So this might be the trade-off. So I get to the VDA and do my traction and braking test 20 times for each direction, 20 times traction, 20 times braking. And what do I find? Well, let me get my phone here because my memory is not that good at these days. With the tire backwards, you are getting nearly 5% better braking. That's huge. 5% better braking is often the difference between a very good tire and a very average tire in the snow. However, on the flip side, literally with the tire forward, you are getting 9% better traction. And that's even more huger because it's a bigger number. I science that. How does the traction and braking differences translate into lap time? Well, let's go find out. But before we do that, are you now thinking about buying new tires? I'm happy to say that this video's sponsor will help you. It's Tires Easy. Tires Easy have been in the game for over 20 years and for this Black Friday, they have some amazing deals. Not only do they retail over 200 brands to fit every budget, they have thousands of installers across the USA and offer an amazing 45 day returns policy. As we're now learning from this video, a correctly mounted Prelli is a wonderful tire in the winter and Tires Easy have some of the best prices available online. They also have excellent coupons, including up to $150 off top brands like Pirelli. Additionally, they offer rebates such as $200 back on Continental, Goodyear, and many others. That can be stacked with the exclusive discount code TIREVIEWS for an extra 5% off the final price. That's amazing. Shop online with ease, enjoy free shipping, and use one of their local installers to ensure a hassle-free installation experience. Go show Tires Easy some support, linked in the description. Okay, this is a TIREVIEWS top tip that you'll only ever find on this channel because I, I just don't think anyone else in the world cares. Um, if you're doing a snow track day and you're being plagued by understeer in your front wheel drive vehicle, turn your directional tires around and you'll have more front end bite. So that extra braking we noticed on uh, traction and braking, it's translated to a tire that turns a little bit more sharply at the front. Now this does mean the back is wandering coming out of the corners or coming into the corners or any part of the corners and you do notice the lack of traction for sure coming out of the corners so it's not all positive but as something that is a very understeering package this golf gti turning the tires around making them backwards i've actually started enjoying it a little bit in the snow so that's a tire reviews top tip as for the times it was actually very close it was about two two percent uh slower having your tires backwards. And again, I think most of that was lost in the traction areas. There isn't a whole lot of huge braking areas on this course, but when you were braking, uh, it was noticeable. And then when you turned in, when you tipped in, that was when the extra time was gained, I guess, because a little bit of oversteer in a front wheel drive vehicle is good for time. So this was meant to be like a little short video of me being like, ha ha ha, you turn your tires backwards and it makes everything worse. But so far, we have better braking, worse traction, slightly slower lap time, but a more fun package. And I don't think I can leave you there. I, I don't think I can see like, okay, just turn your tires around and you'll have better experience or a worse experience. I think I need to dig into this a little bit more. So 
I'm going to continue this, hopefully with Prelli's help, because we're using their excellent SF3 tyre, and uh, look at hydroplaning, aquaplaning, dry and maybe wet. Let's see. Good news, with the generous help of Prelli, we now have data from wet and dry testing, and the results are fascinating if, if you're a tyre nerd, which I guess you are because you're watching this. During wet handling, the tyres felt pretty similar to each other, but with a hint of what I found in the snow. The turn-in felt a tiny bit better on the backwards tyre. Now, car balance is a very complicated thing, and it might not actually be that the front tyre was causing the quicker reaction, but now the rear tyre was worse. Either way, the difference in steering response was tiny. I'm almost certain people wouldn't notice anything, and it's certainly less than the differences between two brands of tyre in the same category. What was not small around the lap was the differences in aquaplaning. The SF3 is currently the best all-season tyre in deep water, and the tyre mounted in the correct way was rarely troubled around the lap, but with it mounted backwards, I definitely found my front wheel spinning up more, or just the car pushing a little bit wider in the turn. It's worth keeping in mind that on a wet handling track, the puddles are very shallow. We generally try and have around 0.8 to 1 millimetres of consistent water depth, and as the tyres we're testing are at new tread depth, I'd imagine at worn state in a rainstorm on a real world, the differences would be way worse. So at the end of the lap, the difference in time was just under one second, thankfully in favor of having the time mounted the correct way. For the dedicated aquaplaning testing, we do run deeper water around eight millimeters, and this is much more than one millimeter, eight times more. This highlighted the struggle of the backwards mounted tire. In curved aquaplaning, the backwards SF3 was 10% worse, and in straight aquaplaning, it was over 13% worse. To be precise, this is the difference between losing grip on the surface of the road at 68 kph to 79 kph. And I really think this would affect your life in the real world where there is standing water and puddles and all sorts of other stuff going on. One interesting quick fact from this test, I also tested the previous version of the tire, the SF2, and it had the same aquaplaning performance forwards as the backwards SF3. This really highlights the huge improvements Prelli are currently making. As I said, the SF3 is the best in class in this area. Finally, wet braking, which is a critical safety aspect for the tyres, was 4% better when you had the tyre mounted correctly. Which, this does lead me sadly for you guys to another interesting fact I found. If the backwards SF3 was in my recent all-season tyre test, this tyre would have still placed second place overall in wet braking only behind the forward-mounted SF3, but ahead of all of its rivals. So again, that's something else that highlights, even with 4% off the SF3, it's still one of the very, very best in wet braking. In dry handling, there was almost nothing between the tires. My only notes from the dry testing was that the backwards tire felt a little bit odd under extreme braking, but I didn't really have the vocabulary. I couldn't put it into words why it was odd. It just didn't quite sit right. Both tires ended up on a very similar time overall. Like in wet braking, the dry braking was around a meter difference from 100 kilometers an hour in favor of the correctly mounted tires. Finally, Pirelli kindly tested external noise as per the EU label specification, and the backwards tire produced 0.7 decibels more noise, which is actually pretty significant. If you don't know, tire noise is mostly the air exiting the tread pattern, so it makes sense that the backwards tread would give the air a harder time because it's coming out at unintended angles. So there you have it. Is it a good idea to mount your directional tyre backwards? No, I'm, I'm sure none of you are surprised. You do actually get a little bit more snow braking, but you're giving up grip almost everywhere else. Interestingly, it's not actually a huge amount of grip, apart from in deeper water, but I think it's fair to say you should not cross-rotate directional tyres. They are directional for a reason. A huge thank you to Prelli for supporting this crazy idea. Not a lot of tyre companies would. They're really, really a good bunch of people to work with. And as I said, the new Prelli Citroato all-season SF3 at one my most recent all-season tyre test. It's one Auto Express. It's doing very well in all the tests across Europe. It is one of the very class-leading tyres, so be sure to consider it if you're thinking about buying an all-season tyre. There is going to be loads more interesting tests on the Tyre Reviews YouTube channel in the coming weeks, so be sure to subscribe for those. There is a Patreon or a membership if you want to support crazy testing. Any questions, please do ask below, and as always, safe motoring.